Hi, um, I'm just making this basic video because I wanted to share my experience with the uh, replacement valve cover or rocker cover for my Mini R56 with an N14 engine. Um, it's common that the PCV positive crankcase ventilation system fails, uh, which is underneath this hatch. Um, so it's quite a common replacement part. And I bought this one, this is not a genuine one, I bought this one off eBay, it's uh, quite affordable, I think it was somewhere around 50 to 60 pounds delivered. Um, but it has an issue, and I don't know if this is an issue for all of these, uh, all of these non-genuine ones, but I had a replacement from the same seller and that was exactly the same. So <laughs> I've got two of them, both brand new and both are faulty. Now, um... I'll do a quick rundown on what the problem was because I found out what it is. So the issue is that um, basically you've got this side, there's a hose in the car that connects that to the intake manifold and that sucks uh, air, basically the po that's the positive crankcase ventilation that comes, that sucks air from underneath the valve cover here. Um, and that's important because not only does it remove sort of vapors and things from the engine, but also it's very important to have a negative pressure, a vacuum on that side of the valves because it seals, uh, helps to seal them. So the issue that I had with this one is that at idle, this side here should be sucking air into the intake manifold, which is under vacuum, but this side, had air coming into it as well, which it shouldn't. This side should be closed off when this side is sucking. And at idle, if I took the pipe off here and put my hand on there, I could feel it sucking air in, which is just going in here and out there. So not only does it uh, mean that there wouldn't be much of a vacuum on the actual uh, engine, it also means that I was getting unmetered air into the engine, which the ECU complained about. Um, I didn't get any engine warning lights but the car didn't run, run that great, and when I looked at the ECU, there, were, there was a code for unmetered air. So, what was going on? Um, well, I popped this cover off, and I've seen some photos of the genuine covers, and it seems like this is just a aesthetic cover, and underneath there's another part, but on, these, on this one, at least, which is a non-genuine part, this is the actual cover for the PCV system, and you can see some, what looks like heat welded, uh, seals around those parts but I just got a um, fat screwdriver actually it was a um, what do you call it a, a tire a tire bar for fitting tires just leave the leave it around all the corners and gently gently popped it off and this is what we are greeted with inside so when I run through first I'll show you the problem because that might be why you're watching this okay the problem is this little thing here is a valve that's meant to seal. You can see this rubber, let me focus, this rubber, when there's suction from this side, this side gets pulled down. But the problem is this pin that's on the bottom of here was too long. So it meant that actually it never sucked all the way down to make a seal. It was always sort of like a couple of millimeters above the seal. And that's why even when it should be sealed, there was air getting drawn in here. So the solution is quite simple, pull the cover off, gently and carefully, pull this out, shorten that by about two and a half to three millimetres, pop it back in and you can tell it's sealed because actually when you turn it with a little bit of pressure you can feel it's quite tight and grippy, whereas before it was just spinning freely. Um, in fact the amount I had to shorten it by was exactly three millimetres on mine. But don't go too far because obviously you don't want it to fly <laughs> fly off that pin is there to keep it central okay so that that was the problem i'm gonna uh glue this back on i'm not quite sure what glue exactly i'll use right now but you obviously it needs to be airtight and make a good seal around those pieces but thankfully uh you know these pieces actually look quite smooth where they've broken off so i don't think it'll be a big issue once i clean it up and you know degrease it very thoroughly I don't think it'll be a big issue to get that to seal back up with some good quality glue. Hopefully it'll work properly then. Um, there is another valve on this side, 
And that one, in this case, actually seems to seal okay. I've checked that. I put a little slip of paper underneath it, and it grabs the paper when it's down. So that's okay. Okay, so that's the that's the solution for these non-genuine valve covers if you've got a, a similar problem. Even if you're not aware of having a problem, I would check it just by, you know, while the engine's idling, pull that tube off here and put your hand on here. And if it's idling and you feel air pulling in there, then you've got a problem because it's unmetered air. At least it is on the UK models. I think in American models, I've seen pictures of the engine on these N14s having a mass airflow sensor. I think in the in the in the tube directly after the airbox, and in that case, maybe it wouldn't be unmetered air, even though it's still <laughs> even though still it's not meant to go in there. But on the UK ones, this draws air straight from after the airbox, and therefore it's unmetered, and the engine doesn't know how much air is going in. Uh, okay, so this is how the system actually works. I don't know if the genuine ones are exactly the same, but I imagine they are. I, don't, I imagine, you know, the non-genuine ones are just a direct copy, I should think. So this is how it works. Basically, there's two conditions. There's idle, or no, sorry, not idle. There's, there's vacuum. So when the engine is running at a negative intake pressure, meaning the turbo hasn't spooled up enough to produce actual positive pressure into the engine, so the engine uh, intake manifold is sucking air for, and that will come from this pipe that will lift up this little valve here. Uh, can't really see it because my finger's in the way, hang on. So this valve here will be lifted up. Can't really see much movement there, but anyway. So this will be lifted up because air is being sucked on this side and that will draw air from underneath the valve cover here. At the same time, this one, because air is being sucked from underneath, will be closed, which means you don't get any air flowing into the engine from this port. Now, things reverse when the turbo spools up enough to create a positive pressure. In that case, this side becomes pressurized, which forces this seal down. Therefore, the intake manifold is no longer directly drawing air from the valve cover, so there needs to be another route for air to be drawn to, uh, you know, Put a, put a negative pressure under the valve cover and that happens on this side so when this side is down this side um, starts to draw more air basically it's a you know a difference between these two so this side's got a positive pressure and this side becomes a lower pressure than that uh, because this is connected to the intake of the turbo and that means this side then lifts up and that side's down so now air gets drawn through here from under the crankcase, uh, from under the valve cover, and it goes a longer route on this side, which I think is why they don't do it this just this way only all the time. So this side goes into the turbo through the uh, intercooler, then through the throttle body and into the intake. Um, now saying all that, the reason I mentioned how it all works is because I've seen people who want to avoid the carbon buildup and stuff on their valves so they actually block off this port and block off the other end of it on the intake manifold and i've read people saying that's not a good idea because you need that negative pressure underneath the crank underneath the valve cover on the cams um but actually you will still get a pressure a negative pressure there it just won't be quite as strong at lower rpms because um when this side is blocked off and but then basically this will always be the lower pressure side and this will open up. So you'll just always have the air flowing out of this side. The downside of that is that at lower RPMs, the throttle, like I said, this side, it has to go through the turbo, through the intercooler, which is going to condense any hot oil into a little puddle of oil at the bottom of the intercooler. Not great. Then it's got to go through the throttle body as well. So if you're at low RPMs and the throttle body is nearly, you know, like 95% closed, that means that you're not actually going to get great suction on this side, which I think is why they use this one uh, as well, because this one goes directly to the intake manifold after the throttle body, which means that um, you've always got maximum airflow. And then obviously when the engine spools up and the turbo kicks in, it goes through this side. Um, yeah, so that's it. I don't think it's the end of the world to block these ones off. You're still going to get some airflow through there. Um, but ideally, you know, it is definitely, you know, they, they did 
they put both of these routes in for a reason so it's probably a good idea to keep both running and that's what I'm going to do I did experiment for a while with having a what do you call it an oil catch can on this one because you know in, unless you're driving quite willfully usually the turbo is not spooled up enough to create a negative pressure this one's open a lot of the time especially you know when you're cruising this one's pretty much always open um so i just put an oil catch can on this side and yeah it worked all right it does of course mean you've got more points for air leaks to show up so because I was having issues with the PCV system and Elix, I took mine off. But maybe after I've vetted all this and it works properly, I might put it uh, oil catch cam back on there. Um, so there, yeah, there you go. What, what this big thing does, honestly, I'm not entirely sure. I think that that's obviously something to do with this. I think it might be some kind of, uh, what would you call it? You know, like a, a safety system so that if one of these goes too high in pressure or blocks off or something it will open up and bypass the system i imagine that's what it is because you want a you know a stable vacuum you don't want it fluctuating all the time so i imagine this is you know these open up and close depending on which direction the flow goes but i imagine this big diaphragm here just you know it's a, a kind of like a turbo bypass valve just uh maintaining the right pressure i have no idea what this bit does it's only on these newer ones the original N14 valve cover did not have this dingleberry on the back here. Um, this actually has a this little handle pulls out, and then on the N14 engine there isn't anything that connects to there. So I don't really know what that's for. I guess you don't keep this on when you're running the engine because there's this handle's actually too big and it gets in the way, hits the airbox. So. But then again, you know, if it were just a dust cover, why would they have a, a rubber seal on it? I'm not sure. Does this valve cover serve dual purposes for other cars? Like maybe the, I think the Peugeot 206 GTI, is it? Or 206, 207, 208, something like that. One of the Peugeot GTIs uses the same N14 engine, Prince engine. Maybe there's something that connects there for this, but... um At least till now, you know, I've checked it and it didn't seem to be sucking in any air. <laughs> Maybe that's because it was broken though. We'll see. Uh, so there you go. I hope this video was useful. I, I realise I've blabbered on a bit, but, you know, quite a bit of information in there. So I hope that's helpful. Cheerio.